Hello everybody, um, I'm Rachel, if you don't know me, you might recognise me from uh, shows such as, no, uh, recognise me from being in design, I'm a BA design in isolation, um, I did a video earlier when I was in my pyjamas and I can only apologise for the state that I looked on day 11 of my self isolation. It's ten past two now, so it's ridiculous. I need to get dressed. Uh, I only just got dressed now, and it's quarter cool past two, so it's going well. Um, so I did. Why am I so bad? It's like having guests drunk. <laughs> They're not here, but you need to. Okay. Um, I did a video earlier. Spoke briefly my other one about my project. I cut to it now. This is what is in my mind a lot in the moment. Um, Staying with the Trouble by Donna J. Haraway, absolute legend, in which she speaks about our time or our epoch as being this period of time which contains the past, present and the future and this, this ongoing string of living and dying. She speaks a lot about the importance of making kin, so what we would usually consider to be a normative idea of kin would be our concept of family and having a mother father parental figures and then you have siblings you have grandchildren you then have like your extended family aunts cousins blah, blah, blah. but she says to extend this beyond the human that is something i'm finding very interesting in my project one thing i'm quite excited about at the moment it's quite weird for me because it's not really design it's something that someone would do every day i feed pigeons basically and i whistle every day so in the hope that they will then regain this knowledge or this recognition of my voice. Not active. Maybe kin is the right word. I've become this person, this character, this relation to the pigeons. Uh, I'm going to make some, or I started making one, I'm going to make some really small documentation videos of these things inspired by the documentary of this book, actually. It's really good. It's called um, Storytelling for Earthly Survival. Um, it's basically like an interview formatted documentary of Donna Haraway speaking about this topic quite a lot in it. It's kind of, it's, it's amazing because it's kind of like emergence of a lot of her works and she's just mind blowing to be honest. And also the director is absolutely phenomenal and it's kind of inspired me. Um, but yes, staying with the trouble. I've been doing also a lot with plants, which has been quite fun. Um, there's one of them by my, my bedside. I haven't really named them, but I think if I'm making kin with them, I should have some kind of name. Not in the traditional sense, I'm not going to call her Patricia. Who knows, maybe she will grow to be a Patricia. But So yeah, I don't know how many you've seen, but I did some time-lapse videos in which I explored this concept of temporal bodies and uh, before that I was looking into this idea of caring and empathy and this concept of we can't see plants move we don't perceive them as living things so therefore to be more empathetic towards them you speed them up uh, and kind of tune them into human temporality uh, which is kind of weird because I'm talking about things that are non-human and then my response to that is to make them more human? Don't know. Um, but yeah, if I put this on YouTube, I might, might here put a little... snippet of it. Um, so I basically moved really slowly with the plant. It took me about 11 hours to do one of the films that I showed in work in progress. Um, so in effect, in logic, if I was speeding the plant up, making it more human, you could also argue that through slowing my body down, I was making myself less human. And I was kind of maybe merging into this alternate reality that I love the word alternate the reality that plants may experience maybe um but it's about 
this idea of leavening and bringing together in temporalities to exist in one like landscape or space or concept of time. Um, I haven't done many more of them since the work in progress show because I wanted to think of different ways to document movement of plants because I feel like a lot of people obviously know the medium of time lapse. It's kind of the obvious choice. Um, and I started researching, well actually Nick said this in my feedback for the work in progress show and I found it mega interesting, but Darwin um, published a book called The Power of Movement in Plants in which he created these illustrations of plant movements through observing them uh, through a glass pane and he would attach these really fine glass needles onto the leaves of like seedlings or baby plants and he would... Uh, I don't know if he did exact intervals, but maybe usually over the course of two days, he would stop, observe where the glass needle is, it had a small bead of wax on it, and he would then dot each individual one and kind of draw it up like a dot to dot. Uh, it would look, they look slightly like star constellations when they're done, it's really, really nice. So I started doing that. I've been individually learning my plants to quite a lot of detail, doing lots of research on them. Uh, turned out I was treating one of them really badly and putting them into direct sunlight when they don't need it or want it, and they need to be in very humid places, so I've been showering with that specific plant every day, which has been a nice bonding time. Um, and she seems a lot happier. Also, I'm going to write some fictional stories uh, of, like, alternate kin making. Um, so breaking up this idea of the heteronormative family and expanding that to other species and maybe even expanding that beyond my home and then really kind of interrogating the terrain and like the small communities of birds and individual animals that are living around me and being quite aware of that and trying to interact with them in any way I can. One of my little mates has just turned up. I don't want to scare them. Definitely is one. Back to second video, quarter past two video. Um, I do a little uh, show of my desk downstairs, basically. Um, the plant in my shower. She's, uh, she's there. She's from eastern Brazil originally, so she needs to be kept in a humid climate with dabbled light. Uh, yeah. There's a little desk I, uh, I made up. Uh, this is half of a, one of those Ikea chairs that you could, like, bounce in. Uh, <laughs> I screwed and Oh, of course! This is, um, this is Shame. He's, he's my, my fifth housemate. Um, he's a very sad man, but he's, I don't really know what else to say, it's everything. he's a bit sad, but he's a big part of my heart, my heart, my house, he really is what keeps us going some days, we just come and tell all our problems to him, he is, he's got so much shit on me, it's unreal, anyway, so yeah, I've got a nice little setup here, I've got my Boston fern chilling out here, um, a little pigeon I made in ceramics when I got a bit bored. She's called Jacqueline. Purely just because I love the way that French people say pigeon. Uh, yeah. So, that's where I've been sitting trying to do work. I was saying before that I really think this is a very valuable and unique experience that we're going to go through. And How often does a global pandemic come around, guys? Like, make the most of it. Um, I know, obviously, mental health is a very big issue. Um, regarding isolation and I'm someone myself who has struggled with mental health issues and um, I'm obviously a very lucky person because I'm surrounded with company and I have a garden I can go outside um, but I don't know besides that obviously it's helping me out I'm conscious of mental health and how it could be affecting the people and I just I feel like this is a very good way um, of tackling feelings of loneliness 
um, feelings of anxiety, because a lot of time my anxiety is just simply because of things I store up in my head and I can't express or output in any way. Yeah, I guess main points at the moment. I'm making kin with the animals or existing species around me um, and um, considering them not just, you know, non-living living things in my house but as uh, roommates, as neighbours, um, kind of changing this terminology and language around what we consider kin or social, social species. Um, but stay positive. This is a really amazing experience that for some reason we have been given, we have been chosen for. And I think we can make the most of it and be positive. Obviously those of you that haven't been as fortunate in housing situations and that may struggle more than others, sending you my love and thoughts and wishes. And I genuinely believe that we're a really special year and each one of us can, you know, push through as a, as a group and not just, you know, isolated individuals and it's amazing that Emily made this I'm very grateful and yeah just stay happy and positive and I'm very open to talk to people if you felt like my project is um in some way related to yours or you want to speak about certain things that I might have spoken about yes I'm open not just because I'm lonely but I appreciate you